When people visit the southeastern Anatolian province of Mardin, this gem of lost antiquity quietly sits, often overlooked, and when one begins to investigate said site, they are often left with more questions than answers. For why does such an astonishing ruin go largely unnoticed? Why is it not more largely discussed within archaeological circles? Could it be due to the fact, as one with any level of knowledge regarding lost civilizations and the proof therein latches eyes upon the site, they instantly recognize its characteristics synonymous with these studies, matching other, yet rather interestingly, accidentally revealed ruins from around the world. The style of, and the decision to bore the dwellings from solid stone, reminiscent of many unexplained ruins, such as the underground city of Derinkuyu, a particularly interesting site when indeed discovered entirely by accident, one which to this day remains heavily debated and to some highly controversial. This site, known as Dara, is exhibiting geological processes which are now, unfortunately, beginning to erode it back into the landscape. The construction technique, however, still testament to its original builder's abilities and indeed its possible age. Yet this does not answer the question as to why this ruin goes largely untalked of, largely unstudied and overlooked. For parallel to the erosion argument exhibiting its true age, it can also be used as an advocate for its official dating within the Byzantine era. The lack of surviving ruins will often be used as a way to dismiss such claims of antiquity due to a lack of evidence. Thus, we wanted to dig a little deeper to see if, via visual evidence, we could confirm that there is indeed reason to suspect that the site could possibly generate controversy for those who originally dated the site. This to confirm our initial suspicions. Still, surviving tool marks present upon the stones match that of other controversially dated sites. How can a ruin apparently dating from the Bronze Age exhibit such long cut marks or finishes across the stone? Like that of the ancient pyramids, how could copper tools have accomplished such feats within Dara, Giza, and the other sites around the world? It is a question which we find highly compelling. The academic paradigm in regards to the chronological history of man the claimed, continued, warts and all documented, completely linear journey to the modern day from a claimed birthplace upon the continent of Africa to the caves of Europe and Asia, becoming post-Ice Age neoliths, all somehow mysteriously capable of incredible feats, all mysteriously deciding to build similar structures in similar ways of similar size, with no explanation even attempted. All this claimed as having happened and fully known of without a single gap. An institutional castle built from nothing but sand. The Bering Strait is home to a theory of the same name, crucial to this evolutionary tale of human development. Yet what resulted from research done by a handful of highly capable individuals of integrity, it is a site which proves beyond doubt that the Bering Strait theory is nothing but a lie, one which those who profit from this current paradigm due to steel have been revealed spending great efforts in protecting it from the truth, a truth mutated into a perceived conspiracy. The Bering Strait was a frozen landmass connecting continents crucial in explaining primitive man's travel across them. A modern historical paradigm not only explaining the migration of man to the rest of the world, but it must have been at a particular specific time in history to fit currently funded scholarly accepted opinion on the development of man. Virginia Steen McIntyre, however, found fossils, stone tools, and strata dating back 200,000 years earlier than academically accepted. She was told to either repeat the excavation and provide fitting dates, or her findings would be thrown out. She stood by her research and eventually lost her funding. However, it seems that Virginia had a knack for studying areas which are clearly, if historical teachings be inaccurate, highly controversial areas of archaeological interest. 
for she was seemingly a thorn in their sides with her other previous research and subsequent discoveries too, specifically those made at other sites such as Huyatlaco, an archaeological site in the Valsaquillo Basin near the city of Puebla, Mexico. After excavations in the 1960s, the site became notorious due to geochronologist analysis from the research done in conjunction with steel and others also indeed indicated that human habitation at Huayatlaco dated to as far back as 250,000 years ago. Wikipedia states regarding these finds, quote, These controversial findings are orders of magnitude older than the scientific consensus for habitation of the New World, which generally traces widespread human migration to the New World to a maximum of 13,000 to 16,000 years ago. End quote. Although these two sites are a considerable distance from one another, they are crucial for the chronological storyline of modern claims regarding timelines of human migration slash habitation dates, which they want to be perceived as far back within antiquity as being 13,000 years ago. However, this evidence proves that humans had already established these landmasses more than a quarter of a million years ago. Although Wikipedia predictably attempts retorts to these claims, to their credit, they have listed a vast array of incredibly talented, highly qualified specialists, along with their own testimonies and personal investigative conclusions supporting the work of Virginia Steele McIntyre. It's also to its credit that they note the harassment received by these pioneers who literally threw the rules out of the window in pursuit of the truth. Quote, Steen McIntyre claims that some of the original research team were harassed, viewed as incompetent, or saw their careers hampered due to their involvement in such a controversial and anomalous investigations." End quote. She would eventually lose access to funding, lambasted for her fines and claims never ceasing. Regardless of these attacks, we find Virginia and the many other courageous individuals commendable in their search for the truth and they are undoubtedly areas which they have debunked with artifacts and dates, evidence so passionately argued as lies, it is almost complementary to her ability. This controversy is to us undoubtedly highly compelling. We have often hypothesized here upon our channel that there was once an ocean-going, globally powerful advanced civilization an antediluvian, as in pre-flood, advanced multi-nation civilization, whose masons were somehow capable of the seemingly impossible moving enormous stones via now lost knowledge, creating the many unexplainable megalithic sites we all still gaze upon with awe. A civilization which the evidence would suggest was suddenly and mysteriously swept away. Yet testament to their building abilities and the enormous megaliths incorporated into their still existing structures, they still exist, still to tell a tale, a proof, if not legacy, of their past existence. Yet what became of these people? Presumably the lucky ones who survived. With incredible knowledge, yet suddenly incredibly limited technological abilities, ergo a sudden lacking in the ability to move in some cases, and in many more, to now precisely cut these enormous stones, thus antediluvian stone choices, and their finish, although appearing younger, could in fact actually be earlier works. Yet this still surviving knowledge could have aided in what became Neolithic man in their own seemingly impossible ancient feats not just setting the megaliths aloft, but to have carved and carried them over great distances. How else could this so-called Neolithic group design Stonehenge, for example, a now proven, once perfect solar calendar, if it were not created by a group possessing great re-existing knowledge, a group who possibly somehow survived cataclysm? How could Neolithic man, with supposed stone tools, have aligned such perfectly erected multi-ton megalithic sites? How could one have cut them, transported them? How could they have created such dolmens as that of Dolmen de Soto? First documented in New World History in 1922 by Armando de Soto Marias, who wanted to build a house on his own land, an estate, which was known as La Lobita within Spain. 
In 1924, German archaeologist Hugo Obermeier was asked to perform excavational research by the Duke of Alba, Jacobo Fitzjames Stewart. He discovered eight bodies, each buried in a fetal position, accompanied by artifacts. Yet what we find incredible in regard to this, and indeed the countless other inexplicable Neolithic sites – dolmens, menhirs, and hinges – found all over the globe is the inclusion of stones weighing many hundreds, sometimes thousands of tons in weight, incorporated into the builds, and in particular, within the Dolmen de Soto. The question remains, how did these supposed Stone Age primitive people accomplish such tasks, if not using applied knowledge? It is a question which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered the fascinating fossilized footprints of apparent ancient giants that may have once roamed our Earth. These prints, undoubtedly of a tremendous age, a timeline and existence which flies in the face of current teachings. Along with these giant prints, we have also touched upon the baffling, seemingly melted handprints found upon stones within Wyoming. Yet one area of fossilized prints which have seemingly slipped through our radar until they were recently brought to our attention is the vast array of extremely ancient human-sized prints found throughout the world. In this segment, we will specifically focus upon those found within St. Louis, firstly due to their remarkable nature, but also due to a curious letter received by a fellow of similar interests recorded by William R. Corliss in his source book, Volume Strange Artifacts, sent in 1837 by an English geologist. It read as follows, quote, Lest I should again neglect to call your attention to a subject to which I have long since intended to claim your particular regard, I will in this brief space allude to it. In the fifth volume of your journal, 1822, there are remarks on the prints of human feet observed in the secondary limestone of the Valley of the Mississippi by Mr. Schoolcraft and Mr. Benton, with a plate representing the impressions of two feet. Ever since my researches on ripple sandstones, published in Jameson's Edinburgh Journal, I felt persuaded the prints alluded to were the genuine impressions of human feet made in the limestone when wet. I cannot go on with the arguments that may be urged in proof of my opinion, but rely upon it. Those prints are certain evidence that man existed at the epoch of the deposition of that limestone, as the birds that lived when the new red sandstone was formed. Get all the evidence on this head you can, rely upon its most important results will be its consequence. He continued, his fellow friend Sir Woodbine Parrish, who was seemingly an English knight of the realm, was familiar with other prints. Quotes, tells me of similar impressions which have been seen in South America, and there was a dispute among the top Catholic sects as to whether they were the prints of the apostles themselves. End quote. These mountains of accounts and actual physical proofs that man may be very much older than currently argued, we not only found seemingly overwhelming, but certain individuals' denial of such highly compelling. Due to the abundance of unexplainable ancient high technology and the advanced architectural abilities which we share found all over the world, in addition to the missing knowledge as to how these feats were once achieved, one must conclude that not only did the human species once experience a global catastrophe, but were also, seemingly, in global contact prior to said event. If this be the case, and the evidence we continue to present does indeed support such hypothesis, one would presume that we would see gaps in geological data, along with the forager paradox we recently shared in our Was Darwin Wrong special which is the gap in population growth which one would expect to observe in the data to be present if our hypothesis be true. Intriguingly, 
It would seem that this gap has now also been discovered in the history of the human genome, and instead of being coined a paradox, they have instead been labeled a ghost population. According to the British media outlet The Guardian, quote, Scientists have found evidence for a mysterious ghost population of ancient humans who lived about a half a million years ago and whose genes live on in people today. Traces of the unknown ancestor emerged when researchers analyzed genomes from West African populations. Up to a fifth of their DNA appeared to have come from the missing relatives. Geneticists suspect ancestors of interbred with the yet-to-be-discovered archaic humans tens of thousands of years ago, much as ancient Europeans once mated with Neanderthals." End quote. In other words, there are gaps in our genetic development, which supports the past experience of catastrophe and explains the loss of ancient knowledge. It continues, quote, In the people we looked at, they all had ancestry from this unknown archaic population, said Sharam Sankara Raman, a computational biologist who led the research at the University of California in Los Angeles. Unlike today, the world was once home to many related species or subspecies of human. And when they stumbled upon one another, mating was not out of the question. As a result, modern Europeans carry a smattering of Neanderthal genes, while indigenous Australians, Polynesians, and Melanesians carry genes from Denisovans, another group of archaic humans. Previous studies have hinted that other ancient humans once roamed Earth, but without any fossils or DNA to pour over, researchers have struggled to learn more about them. End quote. We believe these fossils, if found, and they most probably have, due to them not fitting modern paradigm, would either unfortunately be misdated or simply vanish. Regardless, we find Sharam's compelling and reinforcing research of a now lost ghost civilization highly compelling. <laughs>